Joe Biden, he keeps putting his foot in his mouth. He can't help himself. So last week, he not once but twice defended the 1994 crime bill. He defended it, which is unbelievable because it was an unmitigated disaster. Now, if I'm advising Joe Biden, if I'm on team Joe Biden and I'm getting paid to strategize for him, this is what I tell him. One, never ever mention the crime bill, but if it is brought up to you, which it will be, you always apologize and unequivocally commit to undo the damage caused by the crime bill. Because objectively speaking, it was a disaster. It exploded the U.S. prison population and it exacerbated this crisis, this, this mass incarceration crisis, which was already a problem, but it made things a lot worse. So that's what I would be telling Joe Biden. However, the people closest to him aren't really instructing him to do that. Otherwise, he would have not bragged about the crime bill. But nonetheless, you saw what happened when his senior advisor, Simone Sanders, tried to defend his remarks. She utterly face-planted. So, with that being said, Joe Biden, I've said this once, I'll say it again, he is a threat in the event he becomes a nominee. He could very well lose to Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump can weaponize these issues, exploit these things that are very big weaknesses that hurts Joe Biden and use them against him. In the same way he did this to Hillary Clinton when it comes to trade. And guess what? Trump is doing it again. He's doing what he did to Hillary to Joe Biden. Except this time, he actually is going after Biden for the crime bill. So he tweeted out, anyone associated with the 1994 crime bill will not have a chance of being elected. In particular, African Americans will not be able to vote for you. I, on the other hand, was responsible for criminal justice reform, which had tremendous support and helped fix the bad 1994 bill. Super predator was the term associated with the 1994 crime bill that sleepy Joe Biden was so heavily involved in passing. That was a dark period in American history. But has Sleepy Joe apologized? No. So first of all, let me just say that Donald Trump's nickname for Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe Biden, is lame as hell. Like, what was it? Crooked Hillary? That was something that actually made sense because she was crooked. She was corrupt. Now, he was corrupt as well. He is corrupt. But nonetheless, I mean, it still was something that was more catchy. But Sleepy Joe Biden? Really? So that's stupid. However, getting to the substance here, when he hits Joe Biden here, this has the potential to be a devastating attack on Joe Biden because Donald Trump is right. He did, in fact, sign criminal justice reform into law, and it's not the end-all be-all, but nonetheless, it's still a positive step in the right direction, and it had bipartisan support. So when you have Joe Biden bragging about the 1994 crime bill and Donald Trump Attacking him from the left? I mean, this could be a disaster. And Donald Trump knows how to exploit these weaknesses. How to attack Democrats from the left. Because let's look back at 2016, when he criticized Hillary Clinton for her support of NAFTA and free trade deals that essentially devastated the middle class. Look at how masterful, and I hate to call anything Trump does as masterful, but look at the way he played Hillary in this clip. And I have Your husband signed NAFTA, lot. which was one of the worst things that ever happened well, to the manufacturing industry. That is your opinion. You go to New England, you go to Ohio, Pennsylvania, you go anywhere you want, Secretary Clinton, and you will see devastation where manufacturing is down 30, 40, sometimes 50 percent. NAFTA is the worst trade deal maybe ever signed anywhere, but certainly ever signed in this country. And now you want to approve Trans-Pacific Partnership. You were totally in favor of it. Then you heard what I was saying, how bad it is, and you said, I can't win that debate. But you know that if you did win, you would approve that, and that will be almost as bad as NAFTA. Nothing will ever well, top NAFTA. That That is just not accurate. I uh, was against it once it was finally negotiated and the terms were laid out. I wrote about that in... You called it the uh, gold standard. About, well, I hope... You called I, it the gold standard of trade deals. You, you know said what? it's the finest deal you've ever seen. No. And then you heard what I said about it and all of a sudden you were against it. Well, Donald, I know you live in your own reality, but oh, yeah. that is not the facts. The facts are, I did say, I hoped it would be a good deal, but when it was negotiated, not. which I was not responsible for... 
I concluded it wasn't. I wrote about that. So is it President Obama's fault? Is it President Obama's you fault? Even announced. Look, there Secretary, are different. Secretary, is it President there, Obama's fault? There are different, because he's pushing it. There are different views about what's good for our country, our economy, and our leadership in the world. If he does that to Joe Biden, but on the crime bill, he could beat Joe Biden. Because I don't think that Donald Trump's claim that, you know, he'll win over black voters or that Joe Biden will lose support from black voters. There's no legs to that. Blexit isn't happening or whatever uh, Candace Owens calls it. That's not going to happen, right? Black voters are not going to vote for a party that is explicitly against their interests, that does harm to them. However, Donald Trump doesn't need to win over black voters. All he needs to do is communicate to Democratic Party voters, all of them, that you have someone who is a shit candidate. And that's all he needs to do to win. Demonstrate that the Democrat isn't really looking out for you. And he could win because Democrats always lose when turnout is low. So if Donald Trump can convince people to not vote for the Democrat, that can serve him very well. Again, I don't think he's going to win over these voters who are dissatisfied with Joe Biden because of his support for the crime bill. But he doesn't need to win them over in order to win. All he has to do is demoralize enough voters in order to win. Now, remember back in 2016, Hillary Clinton couldn't barely generate enthusiasm. All of her crowds were small. Nobody really cared. And we're already seeing the same signs that Joe Biden is struggling as well. He's technically the front runner, right? If you look at current public opinion polls and averages, but he's suffering from the same enthusiasm gap that Hillary Clinton suffered from. So what Donald Trump could do is capitalize on this by pretending to be a populist again, hitting Joe Biden from the left in an area where Joe Biden is objectively terrible, and that could be enough to discourage the Democratic Party base from coming out to vote for Joe Biden and Trump could win. And Joe Biden, even if I think he is a little bit more strategically savvy than Hillary Clinton, he could potentially be more vulnerable because... Donald Trump doesn't just have the crime bill where he can hit Biden from the left. Joe Biden also voted for NAFTA. So we can replicate the exact same attack that he used in 2016. Joe Biden also voted for the Iraq war. Trump can use that as well. So if Joe Biden becomes the nominee, this could be a disaster. Now what matters is how Joe Biden response to this if he's actually going to be apologetic about the crime bill or if he's going to continue on with this trend of narcissism and brag about it i mean the fact that he would brag about the crime bill is honestly absurd but it's joe biden so you never know so here's the thing if i'm joe biden how do i respond to this if i am smart first of all again you apologize for the crime bill but the second thing i think maybe it could work if he called out Donald Trump's pro-crime past, because he actually has a relatively dark history, even if he wasn't a politician, when it comes to the issue of being tough on crime. Because as Eugene Scott of the Washington Post writes, while Trump is taking credit for criminal justice reform, his track record advocating for harsh responses to criminal activity greatly precedes his political career. Most notably, his affiliation with the Central Park Five, a group of five teenagers was wrongfully imprisoned following the brutal sexual assault of a woman in Central Park in 1989. The teens were deprived of food, drink, and sleep for more than 24 hours before they falsely confessed to the crime. During the 2016 presidential election, Yusuf Salam, one of the teenagers, wrote about how the current president responded to the headline-grabbing story for the Washington Post. During our trial, it seemed like every New Yorker had an opinion, but no one took it further than Trump. He called for blood in the most public way possible, he wrote. Trump used his money to take out full-page ads in all of the city's major newspapers, urging the reinstatement of the death penalty in New York. I don't know why the future Republican nominee bought those ads, but it seems part and parcel with his racist attitudes. Trump has never apologized for calling for our deaths. In fact, he's somehow still convinced that we belong in prison, Salam added. It's further proof of Trump's bias, racism, and inability to admit that he's wrong. And if I'm Joe Biden, I'm definitely bringing up the fact that Donald Trump took out a full-page ad to call for the death penalty of these teens who were wrongly accused. Now, is that definitely going to help him 
deflect? I mean, maybe, but certainly he can't do what Hillary Clinton did, right? He can't just say, well, no, I don't support the crime bill anymore. You have to actually play offense yourself. You can't just play defense because what Donald Trump did in that clip is he had Hillary Clinton on the ropes. He was playing offense and Hillary Clinton was playing defense. Joe Biden would be smart to actually hit back at Donald Trump and put him on defense as well. But we don't know if he's going to do that. And furthermore, that's assuming he becomes the nominee. But the best case scenario for all of us is if we defeat Joe Biden so he doesn't become the nominee. Because I don't want Donald Trump to get reelected. And if you put up Joe Biden, Democrats, you're opening the door to Donald Trump replicating the exact strategy that made him successful in 2016. Put up a shitty, centrist, neoliberal Democrat. Donald Trump does his fake populism thing and attacks him from the left. Which, I mean, if he's attacking you from the left and there's some credibility to his claim that he's more leftist on this particular issue, that's really harmful. That's damaging. Because Democrats should never be outflanked from the left by a Republican. So, let me just emphasize... We want to defeat Joe Biden. Otherwise, we could see a repeat of 2016. We could see four more years of Donald Trump. And if Democrats are clearly trying to think about electability, which a lot of them do, then you would be a fool to go with Joe Biden. Because out of all the Democratic Party presidential contenders, he's probably the least electable. Am I saying that it's a sure bet that Joe Biden would lose to Donald Trump? No. In fact, it's possible that he wins, right? There are reasons to believe he has a better shot than Hillary Clinton just because I think he's a little bit more strategically savvy than her. But nonetheless, it's still... You're rolling the dice if you go with Joe Biden. We'll just leave that there. You're rolling the dice if you go with Joe Biden.